Just a few days ago, this website won award site of the day and if you have been following this channel, you probably knew a video on it was on its way and here it is. The website features an incredible horizontal scroll animation where text seamlessly animates in and out with perfect timing as new images slide into view. It's all seamlessly tied together with parallax images in the background creating an immersive experience. After a few hours of experimenting, I managed to recreate a close version of this effect using the Intersection Observer API. In this video, I'll show you how to build this stunning landing page experience from scratch. We'll pin this section, animate images and titles horizontally on scroll and add that smooth parallax effect on images, all using HTML, CSS, GSAP and scroll trigger. If you are into exploring award-winning website concepts like this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to catch fresh ideas posted twice a week. And if you'd like to access the source code, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. We'll start by creating two sections, the sticky section for the slides and an outro. The sticky section will have a slider which acts as the primary outer container. Inside that, we'll add another wrapper called slides which will animate on the x-axis to create the sliding effect. Within the slides wrapper, we'll add the individual slides. Each slide will have two parts, the image and the title. We'll wrap the image element inside a div with the class image. For the title, we'll use an h1 and break the text into two lines. Next, we'll duplicate this structure four more times, creating a total of five slides. Each slide will have unique images and text content. Finally, for the outro section, we'll add an h1 with some placeholder text. And that's it. Let's move on to the styling now. We'll start by resetting all default styles. The universal selector will set the margin and padding to 0 and set box sizing to border box for consistent sizing across elements. For the HTML and body, we'll set the width to 100% and height to 700 viewport height to accommodate the scroll animation and apply a custom font family. Images will be styled to take up the full width and height with object fit set to cover for proper scaling. We'll also apply initial transformation and set will change to transform to ensure smooth animations. The sections will be full screen with relative positioning and padding for spacing. Overflow will be set to hidden to clip any content that extends outside the viewport. For the outro section, we'll use a dark background color and center the content using Flexbox. The heading inside the outro section will have white uppercase text, a bold font weight and a large font size. The sticky section will have a neutral background color to contrast with the content. The slider container which holds the slides will have relative positioning with overflow set to hidden to keep the content within the bounds. Inside the slider, the slides wrapper will be styled as a flex container and span 5 times the width of the viewport to fit all the slides. The initial position will be set to 0 to prepare for animations. Each slide will have relative positioning, equal width, and full viewport height. The image container within each slide will be absolutely positioned and will clip any overflowing content. The title wrapper will have relative positioning and use a clipping path to define its visible area. A high Z index will ensure it stays above the image. The heading inside the title will be styled with uppercase text, white color, a bold font weight and a large font size. We'll also optimize it for animations. Finally, I'll paste some CSS from the Lenis documentation as we'll be adding smooth scroll later using JavaScript. And that's it for the CSS. We start by listening for the DOM content to load completely. 
This ensures that all elements are ready for manipulation before the script runs. The first step is registering the scroll trigger plugin from GSAP, which is essential for handling smooth scroll based animations. Next, we initialize a Lanis instance to enable smooth scrolling. Lanis triggers updates to scroll trigger whenever a scroll event occurs, ensuring the animations remain perfectly synchronized. To maintain seamless performance, we use GSAP's trigger to update Lanis on every animation frame. Lag smoothing is also disabled to keep the animations consistent and predictable. After setting up the plugins, we select the required DOM elements. This includes the sticky section that holds the slides, the slides container, where all slides are wrapped, the slider as the primary container, and each individual slide. Next, we calculate some key values that determine how the animation will work. The sticky height is set to 6 times the viewport height, ensuring the sticky section remains pinned for a significant portion of the scroll. This creates enough space for the horizontal scroll animation to play out. The total move represents the total horizontal distance the slide's container will move during the scroll. It's calculated by subtracting the slide container's width from the total width of the slide's container. This gives us the exact distance the slide's container needs to move for all slides to scroll fully across the viewport. The slide width is simply the width of the slider container, which is also the width of one slide. This value helps us manage the animations for individual slides and calculate the relative positions during the scroll. Next, we prepare the slide titles for animation. For each slide, we select the H1 element inside the title container and use GSAP to set its initial position of screen vertically by moving it 200 pixels upwards. This ensures the titles are hidden before they animate into view. We then introduce a variable called current visible index which keeps track of the current visible slide. This is essential for controlling the animation of the titles and ensuring only one title is visible at a time. To detect which slide is currently visible, we use the intersection observer API. The observer monitors each slide and tracks how much of it is visible within the slider container. The core logic of the observer works as follows. For each observed slide, we calculate its index and gather all the slide titles. When a slide becomes at least 25% visible, we consider it the currently active slide. The index of this slide is stored in the current visible index. Using GSAP, we animate the titles. The title of the active slide moves into view with a Y value of 0 when all other titles are moved back off screen by a Y value of minus 200. This ensures that only the title of the active slide is visible at any given time. If a slide's visibility falls below 25%, it is no longer considered active. The observer adjusts current visible index to the previous slide's index or null if no slides are visible. The titles are updated accordingly to reflect this change, maintaining smooth transitions between the slides. The observer is configured to use the slider container as its root, meaning it only tracks visibility within this container. The thresholds are set to zero and 0.25, triggering the logic when a slide becomes visible or leaves visibility at this point. Finally, we attach the observer to each slide, ensuring all slides are monitored for visibility changes. This setup forms the foundation of the logic. Finally, we'll use scroll trigger to handle the horizontal scroll animation and parallax effects for the sticky section. The trigger is set to sticky section, meaning the animation starts when this section reaches the top of the viewport. The animation continues for the full sticky height, which we calculated as 6 times the viewport height. The scrub option ensures the animation progress stays in sync with the scroll, creating a smooth fluid effect. During the animation, the sticky section remains pinned in place thanks to the pin property. This allows the slides to scroll horizontally while the section stays fixed on the screen. The onUpdate callback executes whenever the scroll position changes. First, 
we calculate the progress, a value between 0 and 1, representing how much of the animation has completed. Using this, we calculate main move, which determines how far the slides container should move horizontally. This value is set as the horizontal translation x of the slides container, enabling the horizontal scroll effect. We then calculate the current slide by dividing main move by the width of each slide and rounding down. This tells us which slide is currently in view. We also calculate slide progress, the fractional scroll progress within the current slide, which helps determine the parallax movement for the images. For each slide, if it's the current one or the next one, we calculate a relative progress to track how far along that slide's image should animate. This relative progress is used to create a parallax effect by slightly shifting the image horizontally based on its scroll progress. The image scale is also set to 1.35 to maintain the zoomed in effect. For the slides that aren't active, the images are reset to their default position with no horizontal movement. This ensures only visible slides have dynamic effects, optimizing performance. This combination of scroll trigger, progress calculations and GSAP animations ties the vertical scroll to the horizontal movement of the slides with parallax effects on the images, adding depth and visual interest. It creates a seamless and interactive scrolling experience. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.